six, okay, and you're not worried about the pride lift, right? What would you do if you played that? Especially in the van, that's what you want to do, I think. You take there, now it gets scary. Do you know, do you know what to do in this line if you take on a seven? Things get weird. After you take it, he has this funny trick where he can draw your king out into the center. You've seen this before, right? This is actually okay for black, believe it or not. But one of the funny things that white can do before taking is this move d4, which opens up the center even more before capturing on f7, so that they can even more quickly bring their pieces out to attack the king. So here's the secret. Really, after you play d5, and they take this pawn here, the best thing to do is a little intermezzo. That's fancy schmancy or in between. Okay? Where you attack this bishop, and at some point here, you're going to win the pawn back. I could go into a lot of opening theory right now, but um, it's not the most important thing. I would say that one of the, one very common principle that we would apply universally to either bandits or when you take the pawn because there's all these sort of really weird tricks. So I would say you can play 985. Look up that line when you get home, okay? You're on chess pin, so you can find some information. You're on chess.com too, right? Okay. So there you go. Alright, now after he didn't play this, he played knight c3 and you played bishop c5, copy cat chess. I usually probably play here because I don't like some copy as much as I can. D3, D6. Yeah, he plays h3. You know why he played that, right? Why he played h3. Right. So he's maybe going to go there, but you didn't really care about stopping him being h6. You played bishop e6. I like that move. It's, it's a way to stop the threat of bishop e5 and knight d5 without actually wasting a tempo in h6. So I think this is a 